Have you ever thought about the fact that AI can actually replace your job? So by the end of this video, we'll talk about exactly my opinion of AI and job security and why you're actually not as safe as you think you are. Before we get there, let's head with 52, week 52 of the Dividend Challenge. It is finally the one year anniversary of the Dividend Challenge and I'm so excited to show you what is going on with this week's portfolio. And just as a recap, every single week I deposit at least $200 into my dividend investing portfolio. And let's get started. So first of all, let's start with the Webull portfolio and Webull portfolio shows that I'm currently at $1,335.64. When we look at what is in it, there is FFIN, eight shares, these are all free. APLS, one share, all free. DEI, nine shares, all free. And AVT, three shares, all free. And if you're wondering how you can get free stocks, you can basically just go to my info box, click on that Webull link, and you can get free stocks by just depositing $100 into your Webull account. And you can always withdraw that amount if you want to. If you don't want to use Webull anymore, that's completely fine. But at least you get your free stock that is valued up to $1,600. 1600 $1,600, that is a lot of money if you ask me. So um, good luck, good luck with your free stocks. And let's continue. McDonald's, one share, and one share of Alteryx, three shares of Nokia, and one share of Bank of America, and two shares of Tapestry. Now that we've taken a look at these, let's also take a look at my paper trading. So my paper trading portfolio currently has 1.3 mil and I'm up by 34.76% and the biggest leading indicator or the leading factor is definitely Tesla, which is up by 197.2%. And after the stock split, again, Tesla just has been pretty crazy. And I kind of wish this is like my actual, like, you know, Tesla share, but I mean, I, I do have some Tesla and you'll see in just a bit. And um, a good thing about Webull is that it does have paper trading. So if you're not yet familiar with using your own money to invest, definitely open up a Webull account and you know get your free stocks by depositing $100 and just play around with the free stock and also play around with the paper trading because this allows you to get a sense of how stock market investing works and how the market moves and what do these different, uh, different order types mean, buying and selling, and closing and quotes, what do they all mean? How do you set up limit orders? These are all things that you can learn with paper trading. And now that we've looked at what Webull portfolio, what my Webull portfolio is doing, let's take a look at the M1 Finance portfolio. So this is my M1 Finance portfolio. Currently, I am up by 24.39%, up by $5,591.42. And you can see over here, my M1 Finance portfolio is currently at $31,400. $172.05 and this is also another improvement from last week. Let's tap into it to see what is up with Cherry's passive income. So for tech, you can see that I'm up by 151.11%. I'm up by $5,700 and you can see I'm almost at 10K with just tech. And um, there's also real estate and so for real estate is actually also up, which is also different from last week because I was actually down with real estate last week. Hide my losses. So so realty income is down, NRZ is down, store capital is down. And you can see so far, only my NRZ and LTC and SPG are down. And SPG is all about malls, so it's really normal that this one is down. And uh, let's tap into the tech since um, tech has been pretty booming. So you can see Tesla is up by 268.71%, up by 4,000 bucks. Apple is also up by 89.26%. Microsoft is also up by 52.59%, and Amazon up by 98.95%, and Google up by 39.5%. 0.18%, Visa up by 29.26%, and Alteryx also made a bounce back from last week. And let's take a look at another slice. Let's take a look at finance. So finance sector, I have JP Morgan Chase, I have Main Street Capital, I have Bank of America, Athlac, T. Rowe, and Wells Fargo. And so far, Wells Fargo is the only one that is down, and which I'm not like overly worried about this because this is just a small 
small percentage of my overall portfolio and the cost is only around $283 so it's a small percentage compared to the rest of my portfolio and the good thing about using M1 Finance is that you get to do automatic investing, automatic dividend reinvesting, automatic allocation according to all these different percentage that you preset and you can see right now I have cash of 41 cents which is probably for my dividend and once this reaches the threshold it will automatically reinvest this money back into my portfolio and so the more money you have in your portfolio the faster you will be able to reinvest that money because you will collect more dividend and the accumulation of the dividend income you collect will automatically be invested and in addition to that with M1 Finance you also get to do automatic deposits and so in the transfer over here you can see all of these things are just automatic so it's a very hands-free situation and that's why I love M1 Finance so much and I also like how they don't really have an emphasis on like the stock price for example with Tesla if you just look on the surface level you can't even see what price Tesla is you have to actually click into it and even if you tap into it click into it you still can't see the share price you can only see the cost and you have to actually scroll in order to see the price and after the split Tesla right now is at $447.37 and currently have 12.87 shares of Tesla. Hey. <laughs> now that we've taken a look at the M1 Finance portfolio, let's take a look at the Fidelity portfolio, which is my growth portfolio and also my largest portfolio. So this is my Fidelity portfolio. Currently, I am a buy 0.51%, a buy $599.54. My portfolio value is $117,946.43. And my year-to-date one year rate of return is 40.05% and this is as of July 31st. Let's take a look at what is in my portfolio. So I have cash around um, $1,600 and I have CCL, I have Boeing, I have PSEC, I have Intel, I have 3M, I have MasterCard, I have Uber, I have Visa, I have Disney, I have Tapestry, Starbucks, Baba, Facebook, Elf, Revolve, and Tesla. And um, let's take a look at the total gain and loss over here. And so you can see my total gain and loss in terms of dollar amount. So my total gain loss so far, I am down with CCL, Boeing, and PSYC, which is like really consistent throughout. I've always been down with these three stocks and you probably know why. Um, Boeing with like the whole scandal that happened earlier in the year and also of course the whole airline industry isn't doing well with the current Roni situation and CCL same thing. People are not really going on cruises right now because of the Roni situation and um, with PSEC I'm also not too worried because this is like my dividend stock and it also takes up like a rather small percentage of my entire portfolio so I'm not too worried about this and um, let's also look at the best performing one so Tesla definitely it's up by 10k um, $10,000 and $708.68 and it's up by almost 400% which is just unreal and I actually sold some Tesla earlier so if I did not sell those you know Tesla shares this would be even greater and there's also Revolve up by almost 80% and Elf up by 73% and Facebook up by 73% and Alibaba up by 60% so these are just some of my best performing stocks but just because you know percentage wise you're you know performing really well does not necessarily mean the dollar amount is the greatest gains and so when we order by dollar amount you can see it's Facebook, Tesla, Baba, MasterCard and Disney and um, Visa so you can see all these stocks is because I bought a lot of them so that's why they have been giving me like a lot of like dollar amount return and um, this is also consistent with my overall allocation I also tend to have like more of these stocks like Facebook, Baba, MasterCard, Disney, and um, CCL relatively more because I did buy a lot of CCL before the Roni situation. And so that is it for my Fidelity portfolio. And I just want to say overall, I'm really satisfied with what is going on, especially I want to be honest, like nowadays, I don't look at the stock market every single day. And also, I just don't see a lot of buying opportunities because everything's pretty expensive right now. So I don't really, you know, check up on my portfolio every single day. And it's kind of just running in the background, doing its own own thing very passively just upgrading my net worth which is you know what I want to do I don't really see myself doing day trading or looking at the market every single day I'm satisfied with you know something that sits in the background like literally does not take me any extra work at least right now and in the beginning I have mentioned that we're going to discuss topic of the week is AI and job security and I want to say this topic is not just about AI but also just overall how nine to five employees tend to have this false sense of security thinking that you know 
their nine to five paycheck is so stable, so secure, they should, you know, think that they will have this job forever and have this job title and have this salary forever and have this pay forever. But if there's anything that this pandemic has taught us is that, you know, all these like, you know, stable things and secure things are not really that stable, especially like being in LA, I witnessed the downfall of a lot of um, companies in the entertainment industry and it's really unprecedented and it's also very um, shocking. A lot of people did not see this coming. There were major layoffs in a lot of major companies and um, it's really important for us to be able to anticipate these changes and just have emergency income stream. A lot of people, they say emergency fund, but in my opinion, emergency fund is not enough. You also need emergency income stream that is separate from your day job. So a lot of people, they only rely on one stream of income, which is good in theory, but then because the nature of the job is you can't really be sure whether you'll continue being employed, continue being paid the same amount, um, continue working the same hours, you can't really guarantee that then you are kind of not in control of your own finances as a result. So what happens when you get a pay cut? What happens when you get fired? All of these things you have to consider and it might be, you know, um, not as a parent when you still have the stability of a job when you're still employed right now, but it's the same thing as having an emergency fund when you are not experiencing an emergency, you might think, oh, this is kind of extra. Do I really have to do this? This is so much, you know, extra work or extra things to prepare for. When you're actually facing an emergency, this all makes sense. You're like, oh my gosh, thank God I have this set in place. Thank God I have this emergency fund. Thank God I don't have to dip into, you know, my uh, 401k and retirement accounts and I don't have to pay a penalty because I have this emergency fund. Same thing with income streams. And um, back to the topic of AI and job security, I really do think AI is really being underestimated right now. And this is also the common rhetoric between a lot of great leaders and uh, entrepreneurs and engineers. And I still remember just listening to to a speech by Elon Musk and he was just talking about his viewpoint when it comes to AI and he said a lot of people are just really underestimating the speed of innovation, um, technological innovation, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence and he says artificial intelligence definitely has a chance or maybe it is already surpassing the entire like human race intelligence combined together. So it's like really, really powerful. And he also gave us a little, um, a couple illustrations of how AI can learn new games in a matter of seconds. And so this is definitely something that we have been underestimating. And now we're just talking about games. How about jobs, like job security? There are many things that can be automated, especially when it comes to entry level jobs. So when we're talking about like data entry, when we're talking about even entry level finance roles or accounts, Accounting roles. All of these things, in my opinion, have a huge potential of being replaced by artificial intelligence. And I deeply believe that the only reason why it's not really happening right now is because people up there are kind of, you know, stopping this from happening because there will be a detrimental effect on people's like employment rate, um, on the whole entire economy and the society and also people's fulfillment. So there are a couple of things that come into play, right? When AI replaces jobs, of course, more people will become unemployed and um, the cost of goods will also go down because as less human labor is involved, the cost of goods and services will also go down. Normally, the cost is really high when it's like human labor intensive or it requires an actual human being there and the more support you have from an actual human being, usually the higher the prices are. If you're able to, you know, replace some of these aspects with robots, then usually the cost can go down. But not just that. Also, one thing that a lot of people, they tend to ignore is fulfillment. A lot of us, we actually derive a lot of fulfillment from our nine to fives, from our job title. And I still remember when I was working my very first job as a big four auditor, I derived a lot of my, you know, own self-worth and just my self-esteem and also my identity from my nine to five job. And I still remember when I introduced myself, right? When you introduce yourself, it's always like, Hey Tom, I'm Cherry and I'm a big four auditor. Like people always tend to describe themselves and introduce themselves as their job title. And people also derived a lot of value and a lot of fulfillment from their job. And so what happens when that is taken away? And I know, you know, sometimes people joke about how they just want to retire and just sit on the couch and do nothing. But when that day really comes, will you actually feel fulfilled? Will you actually feel valued in the society? And so that's why it's so important for us to not only build additional income streams, but also additional fulfillment and passion sources. Because, you know, when that day comes, when we're actually replaced by robots, which I really do 
think from the technological standpoint that is possible, then what else are we? And also what jobs are replaceable and what jobs are not? In my opinion, a lot of these um, things that have to do with data entry, a lot of these um, tasks that lack decision making, a lot of these job titles and positions that lack decision making, they're definitely replaceable by robots to some degree or the other. And um, of course, it also depends on how educated people are in terms of using these technology. For example, one of the companies I invest in, Alteryx. Alteryx automates a lot of the mundane accounting tasks that we have to do within the finance industry. And it's pretty um, revolutionary, I want to say, and it also speeds up a lot of our processes. And if we continue to implement all these different softwares and also automation and even put AI in the picture, then what is going to happen to our entry level jobs? These are all things that we have to think about. And um, of course, the human element is also important in very specific industries and tasks. For example, in my opinion, when it comes to art form, I really do think the human element is very required because when we want to feel something, when, it, when we want to enjoy art, it's a sensation, it's a feeling, it's a connection. And so I really do think it's hard for robots to completely replace that, that feeling of human connection. Another thing is something that requires someone on the other side, for example, coaching. And um, just as a plug, I do have a free training that you can attend in the info box. So definitely click on that if you're interested in the coaching industry. But just talking about the coaching industry, um, the reason why I'm so passionate about it, especially in 2020, is because I have seen what effect the Roni situation has done to us employed people, corporate people, and how people are losing their jobs and losing their income stream and how people have to move back with their parents or maybe even worse, have to rely on their friends or take out loans just to survive. And I've seen firsthand these kind of things happening to people around me. And luckily, a lot of my friends are in tech. And so in tech, it's not as detrimental because people in tech are you know, highly mobile. They go to different companies, even if they get laid off. But just like as a general sense, just looking at different industries across industries, a lot of people are getting laid off, especially in the entertainment industry and the restaurant industry too, and also travel industry. So just looking at what is happening to us, it made me realize that, hey, it's really, really important for people to learn how to build additional income streams even without being you know face to face with a person but also learn this new skill that is not as easily replaced by ai so why is coaching not easily replaced by ai just um Imagine yourself in this situation and close your eyes if you want to, like close your eyes and think, hey, you have to learn a new skill. And this skill is pretty complex, like it's pretty complicated. It's not as easy as, you know, um, tying your shoelace. And I know this is kind of an odd example, but just imagine you're learning this kind of complex skill. And would you rather learn it from just, you know, a system, a computer, or would you rather learn it from a person? And especially if the skill is very complex, maybe it's about, you know, building your public speaking skills, right? It requires some kind of back and forth conversation, it requires some training, it requires some coaching, like what would you rather do? And when you think about the situation, you tend to come to the realization that there are certain elements that cannot be replaced by robots and it's that human connection that's really hard to replace that part, you know, with robots because, you know, learning it from a computer is a totally different feeling than learning it from a human being who can give you feedback, who can, you know, look at where you're at and feel your situation and know how to bring you out of that situation. Maybe Maybe it could be your personal insecurities, maybe it could be your limiting beliefs, but there are certain things that human beings can do much better than a robot, and I really do think coaching is one of them. Um, coaching is one of them, and of course, to some degree, I also believe high ticket sales is also part of it, because um, just think about when you are experiencing some kind of luxurious shopping experience, shopping for a high ticket item, you also care about who is on the other side, and how does that person make you feel? Because a lot of the times, we don't really remember every single word the other person says to us, but we remember the feeling. We remember how we feel when we interact with the salesperson, when we interact with the sales representative, and let's say we're trying to buy like a Ferrari, right? We expect a certain uh, a certain treatment. We expect some kind of customer service. And so when it comes to high ticket sales, I also believe it's important to have that human element. But again, that is just my opinion. I also want to know like, what are your thoughts? What do you think AI is going to do in terms of our jobs? 
security and also how replaceable are you know the jobs that we see in the job market right now and what jobs do you think would be more safe when it comes to the potential of being replaced by AI. So for those of you who might be watching me from IG, you probably know that I've been developing a course in the background and it's called Corporate to Coach Academy, which helps corporate employees transition into being a coach of their own business, so being the boss of their own coaching business. And this is meant to help corporate employees have that additional independent stream of income so that they can be work optional. I never tell any of my friends to just quit their job without a backup plan. So even if you're thinking about quitting your job, you should always have a backup plan, have something that generates you income that is dependable first before quitting your job because I don't want to see any of you, you know, just starve and live in the streets or live in your car. I've been there, done that, not cool at all. And so I'm actually also doing a live training and this is free to you, a free training all about my transformation going from just a corporate employee to being a coach, the boss of my coaching business. And I'm going to walk you through step by step of how I did it and how you can do. So if you want to join that training, simply go to the link in my info box. This is a live training and it's only happening on September 8th. So be sure to join this live training in my info box and I will see you at the live training. Again, this will go through the step-by-step -step process of how I'm able to build my five-figure per month coaching business on top of my full-time job. So this is something that you can do without even quitting your job first. But of course, if you want to, that is up to you. I am not going to control or alter your life decisions. So I am going to see you in my free training. And now that we have discussed the potential problems that comes with AI and um, how AI can replace our jobs, let's also talk about potential solutions. So some potential solutions could be universal basic income that just ensures that people can still survive and live even without a job. And another, another like more preventative solution is just to have people develop more skills, more areas of fulfillment, more passion outside of their nine to five, because again, a nine to five is not guaranteed. You can, you know, guarantee that you are employed at the same company forever. That is just not the nature of having a job. So it's also important for you to be able to have different interests, diverse interests on top of your nine to five alongside with your nine to five, or even just like alternatives that you can go to. Even if you were to feel burnt out or overworked or underpaid at your nine to five, you still have a lot of choices and exit routes. And honestly, I feel like in life, having the freedom to choose is really important. A lot of people, they don't really have the freedom to choose. A lot of people, they're just tied to a job that they hate and they stay there for 30, 40, 50, even 60 years because, you know, they don't really have any other choice and they just kind of pigeonhole themselves into uh, an area and a direction that they hate that they resent, but because that is their livelihood, that is the source of their income, they don't really have an escape route. So I really believe it's so important for us to be able to start to develop those additional income streams and additional passion outside of our nine to fives as early as we can, because of course, income streams and passions and also just different fulfillment sources also take time to build. So let me know your thoughts about AI, job security, and just like the false sense of security um, between a lot of corporate employees. Let me know your thoughts and I will see you in my next wealth building video.